Hi, welcome back to this session of Paint This with Jerry Arnell right here at the Yarnell School of Fine Art. And boy, I'll tell you what, we're going to move on and have a really fun time today. But before we do, I just want to, I always like to give you a little, you know, you know, history of what we've done and why we're doing it and what's going on. You know, I've been doing this for, you know, this TV show since 1987, so it's been right at 30 years and it's really fascinating to paint so many things but because of the restraints of television you know I have to format these paintings to fit that because most of you know me by now many of you have taken lessons from me personally at the studio or in one of the workshops around the country and you know that to do a really good piece of fine art it takes time so what I'm going to try to do is start breaking off into some different subjects now so that we can create you know build your you know your own library of ideas and techniques and and abilities and that's what we're going to do you know it's fun my favorite thing of course is still a big beautiful mountain waterfalls and streams and beautiful landscapes but that's not all there is to it because many of you want other things and I appreciate your cards and letters you send in giving us uh, your thoughts and that's why we're going to do what we're going to do today because you asked for it and that's kind of cool so what we're going to do in this particular painting kind of we've never done this before actually but up here is my reference material I'm going to kind of explain the history of it so you'll know and I'm also remembering uh, using my memory I'm trying to get away from copying so much as all of us should do and I've learned over the years how to have a pretty good photographic memory and the way you do that is you get your reference material whether it be a photograph a sketch or something study it and then just start painting from memory. Now that's harder to do than I, it's not that simple, I know that, but it's a good way to start. Now what you're looking at here, and I want you to see this, this is called the, um, or the Umbrella Man. Um, this is a painting I did for one of my collectors who asked me to do this, of this young lady walking in a, on a sidewalk and around the city. I mean, it looks like she's been shopping, like she's got a shopping bag, and that looks like her purse, and she's got the umbrella with the water coming off and her hair's blowing in the wind. She's wearing a dress and high heels, so she's kind of in a precarious situation there, but it's the atmosphere that's so cool. And we're gonna change it around some, but then we're gonna put this old man carrying the umbrella walking into the tortoise, and we'll have some mud puddles here, and there'll be some splashes coming down here and reflections of him in the water. And then we'll have the city uh, in the distance or part of the town where he's coming from. So this is going to be a unique sort of different a takeoff from what we've done in the past, but you're going to love it. It's fun. And by the way, learning how to put atmosphere in a painting is critical. So you don't even have to do this. You can add, do the atmosphere, but you could put an animal in there. This could be a big deer standing there, It'd be a, a, an elephant or a buffalo, whatever, and you can just do whatever you want. So you see whether you like to do the figures or not, you will learn something in this lesson, and that is how to do rain and mist and fog, and those are some of the things you guys have asked for. All right, so to get started, I'm using a 16 by 20 a stretch canvas this time because it's got to have a little give to it. And by the way, I might mention that just before the show, I had brought this in from the studio, and it was real saggy. Now, this being cotton, and a lot of you experience this and don't really maybe know how to do this, if you flip it over, and you take your mister bottle and you wet the back of it real good and then you rub it real good and get down in these corners and like this just spray right down in there get all the way around and get a nice even rub on it and get it in there see it's tight as a drum it was sagging so bad a while ago i couldn't paint on it very well now these corners too i might mention down in these corners a lot of you ask what these corners are for and what the little pegs that come on your well, that's so you can drive them in there and it separates the wood and helps to tighten the canvas too. That's another reason for that. But I prefer when I'm painting, I just wet the back of it, boom, 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 and it's really tight. Now, it will eventually loosen again. You may have to spray it again or put the pegs in, but that's just a little food for thought there. All right, now the first step is to get atmosphere. Just get some color. We've started with a gray sort of a middle gray, that's just burnt umber, white, and a little ultramarine blue. I just kind of modeled it on with my hake brush just to get the canvas covered. Now we're going to go back in. Actually, we're going to start with our number 12 or number 10 bristle brush. Either one's fine. And we're just going to start laying on color. I'm going to lightly mist it. So we'll have a little blending time here. I'm going to take my gesso. And I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to start scrubbing. So this will give us a little opaque uh, 
you know, the gesso is made to give you a little opaqueness. And of course, we use it as our white paint as well. Now, don't make it solid. Just do it like I'm doing like this. Just splotch it around. You're probably thinking, oh my gosh, what is this guy doing? Well, I think some of you have seen me do this before, especially when we do wildlife or we're just doing a portrait or a figure. You know, just want a modeled background. And this gesso just gives me a little creaminess blending ability. All right, now while that's wet, now you come down and start adding some of the colors you see up there. A little blue, a little purple. Just smush it around. Throw a little orange in with it. Put a little turquoise, a little ultramarine. Remember this is late evening or nighttime. Well, I guess it could be morning too, but first all we're doing is see if we're just scrubbing. Oh, this is just fun. So just have fun for a little bit here. Don't get carried away trying to make anything out of this yet. Now don't blend this too much. So you want to have these splotchiness. Now this is going to be different in a minute, but now you can throw a little red in there if you want to. Now where the figure's going to go, now like up her, around her body, I put this yellowish glow, because that'll be the glow from the lights. That could be light poles or whatever you want back there, and then it's reflecting into it. It looks like she's on a sidewalk. He's just going to be on sort of a gravelly road or whatever. So just keep going here. And by the way, I might mention in this process, lightly mist. And the reason for this is to kind of keep things hydrated so you can buy yourself some blending time. Some time ago, I did a big mural for a lady in her home that had, had burned and it smoked the old mural. And they, you know, I was able to replace this one for her. It was huge. It was like 15 feet long and like six or eight feet high. Well, I was able to do that whole mural almost kind of wet on wet by just a spraying, and it keeps the pigments alive. If you're not careful, though, you'll weaken them too much, and you don't want to do that, of course. But All right, now, adding a little water here and there is really good. Now, this will just be phase one, you guys. We're going to come back, and once we get all this color in here, it'll change over a little t in time. Now, I'm putting a little burnt sienna, a little umber, your blue. This will turn it kind of a model the gray color down in here. This is kind of fun just doing this part, getting all this underpainting. Okay, well, once you kind of get this like that, now you take your hake brush, rinse it out, get a nice chisel. I like to squeegee that with my finger so I have a nice chisel. Now, depending on where the rain's coming from, now in her painting, I have the rain coming this direction, so it's hitting the top of her umbrella. And of course, you can see her hair flipping this direction. You know the wind's kind of blowing this away. On him, I don't have any specific guideline. It looks like his raincoat's kind of flipping that way. But we can probably have the same thing, and you can have water dripping off the back side to see where it's hitting it and running off. All right, so all you're going to do right now then is you take your brush like this, and you just kind of model it together. This kind of pulls the colors together. Be sure you kind of go in this angled direction. I got to spray that. See, it's getting a little tacky. When it starts to tack up on you, that's when you want to go back and add, just spray it a little bit, let it kind of loosen itself up a little. So see all that goofy strokes you had in there a while ago are now kind of blending together just a little bit and kind of giving this a little bit more flavor. Okay, so now while that's still wet, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to spray it again, let the mist 